In this video, you will see a bunch of Zapier examples for workflows that I've built in our business. I'm Jimmy from jimmyrose.me and a content snare. And if you'd like to learn more cool ways to automate your business and get more productive, hit that red subscribe button below. But the thing that people struggle with the most when it comes to automating or getting started with Zapier is just knowing what to automate. It's by far the biggest question I get when I go on podcast interviews or from prospective students of my course, they wanna know like where to get started uh, and what kind of things can be automated because it is quite a complex world. Like there's so many different things you could automate. So how do you isolate the things, you know, which ones to get started with? It's a pretty hard question to answer because every business is so different. Any workflow automation example is only going to apply to like a subset of businesses. There are some examples that apply to most businesses, like the classic example of when someone fills out a contact form and opts into marketing that you add them to your CRM. So there are some, but most of those examples that apply to everyone tend to be kind of boring. So I figured for this video, why not just show you a bunch of examples, a bunch of workflows that I've actually created for our business. While not all of these will apply directly to your business, hopefully by going through it, you'll be able to generate some ideas and get some inspiration for what kind of workflows you can create in your business. Now, first, if you don't know how Zapier works, I recommend watching my Zapier tutorial video, which I will link up uh, in the description below. It'll go to my uh, blog post where the video is embedded, uh, or you can go directly to the YouTube video. Um, if you don't really understand how the basics of Zapier works like triggers and actions. This video is probably going to go a little bit too quickly for you. So I recommend having at least a little base level of knowledge there because I don't want this video to go for hours uh, as I explain every single step. I'm just going to do a quick overview of each Zap just to get you some ideas. All right, let's head over to Zapier. Let's start with a simple social media monitoring example. In this Zap, essentially what's happening is uh, we're monitoring Twitter for a certain search. This is the search here, which I've crafted basically to find any journo request uh, hashtags for things like workflow automation, uh, IFTTT, Zapier, this kind of thing. This is just a Twitter search that's in here, right? So this could be for your brand, it could be for anything. So what that's gonna do is uh, every time a tweet matches that search, it's going to put it in a list. And that's what Digest is. So Digest by Zapier just creates a list of things and releases it on a schedule. So in this case, it's once every day. At the end of the day, it rolls up all the journal requests that match my search and puts it in my ClickUp, which is my task management system. So that way I can just scan through that each day and see if there are any tweets that I need to reply to uh, that match my search. So you could use this for brand monitoring or basically anything on Twitter. For more inspiration, uh, you can actually also monitor Reddit uh, and web search, so Google, um, with other triggers in Zapier. So that's something to think about. Moving on, I have a Facebook group called Grow Your Web Design Business by Content Snare. And every Friday, I share a tool of the week. That's just a post that goes up in the group summarizing a tool that I love and use uh, and linking out to it. Sometimes that will be an affiliate link. Sometimes it'll just be a, a standard link. But what that's doing is just saying every week on Friday, at 10 a.m., it goes into this spreadsheet that I've got here, which is just a list of tools that I like. I've got it open here. So we just have a big list of tools with links and uh, the, the content. And it just randomizes uh, one of the rows from that sheet and posts it into my Facebook group through Buffer. Now, if you'd like to learn how to get a random row from Google Sheets, I will link this up in the uh, video description and it'll be showing on the video as well. Uh, so there is a tactic you can use to get a random row from a Google Sheet. And this is a really good example of where that comes in handy. And the final social media example is this one. So this looks pretty complicated, but it's, it's not. So push by Zapier is uh, this little extension up here. So you click this and it opens up and these are all the zaps that I've got that use push by Zapier. So I've got this one here, push shares Jimmy Rose. So essentially what I do is type in some information, put a yes in here if I want to include LinkedIn and put some hashtags in. And what this will do is it'll take the current URL that I'm on and share it with 
all my social media feeds, right? So maybe I find a really good blog post. Uh, I just open this extension, type in here why I think it's a good blog post and hit send. And this zap will go out. And if I wrote something that's too long, it'll automatically truncate it down for Twitter. It will put it in a spreadsheet that I keep of all the things that I've ever decided to share because I think they're important. So it puts it in a sheet and then it queues it up for all my uh, social media. And of course, it'll only put it on LinkedIn if I decide to do it on LinkedIn by putting just a Y in this box here. And that's what the filter does. It says, if I've got a Y in that box, then we continue and post it to LinkedIn as well. That's it for the social media zap. So now let's move on to marketing. So this first one here is quite similar to the sharing one you just saw. So we're using push by Zapier again to push links to my weekly and my weekly is a newsletter, weekly newsletter of helpful articles and a bit of information for uh, web designers and marketing agencies. So again, if I just find an article that I think is important to share with my audience, I open up this uh, and type in why I think it's important and hit send. And again, it'll send the current URL that I'm on. Uh, that's what push by Zapier does, right? So it, that's what the trigger is. Uh, and essentially it's putting that in another Google sheet. So I have a list of all the things I've ever shared with my weekly newsletter. It then puts that item in an RSS feed, which is a special kind of feed that my newsletter tool is able to read. Um, and if you'd like to learn more about how to set this up, I will link up to my video on curating a weekly newsletter. I go through all the tools and how this is set up. Um, but yeah, so this is creating an RSS feed, which is uh, read in by my newsletter tool to automatically curate all of the links that I've added to it uh, during the week. And then we're just truncating the title if it's too long and then uploading the featured image into my Google Drive because we also upload that uh, to our blog later as well. So it's nice to have all of those images there ready to upload into our WordPress library. So there is a lot of stuff here, but in short, really, it's just when I add something uh, to that push extension, uh, we're queuing it up in that RSS feed for my newsletter. The other stuff is kind of just bonus. Moving on, this is app called Extend Trial for Survey. So we have a form on our website that asks people after they sign up for our software product, it asks them, how did you hear about the product? And when they answer that, so they might say, you know, we heard about it from Google and this is the keyword we search for. It's just a, a standard form on our website. I'll just quickly show you what it looks like. So here it is, very simple. It just says, where did you hear about us? Um, and what would you like to say? So and based on what they pick, it might ask, what do they search for? Or if they say it's in a Facebook group, uh, which group was it? So they can type that in and then hit submit. Now there are some hidden fields on that form that identify the user. So there's a hidden email field and when we send them to it, we set the email. Uh, and when they submit it, we essentially just look up their subscription uh, in our billing tool, which is Chargebee, and we add an extra seven days of trial. And this is really handy because it gives us some really good data about uh, where people are finding out about Content Snare. And we incentivize them to answer the survey by extending their trial for seven days. And this means quite a lot of people fill out the survey, which is super handy. And then we just tag them in Intercom to say that they uh, got their trial extension. And we have some logic in here just to make sure they don't uh, use the form multiple times and, and keep uh, extending it automatically. That's what it's doing with the Google Sheet. Um, just so every time someone requests an extension, uh, it goes in a sheet and if they're already there, we know that they've done it before and that we shouldn't uh, extend it yet again. Moving on, this is a really, really simple one that simply says every time we put a new blog post on our Content Snare blog, so using the RSS feed, um, almost every website has some kind of feed, especially if it's built on WordPress and you can just use a URL like this where it's your domain.com slash feed uh, and that's the RSS by Zapier trigger. It's just adding it to a spreadsheet. So then we have a list of every single blog post that we've created uh, and then we use that as a marketing checklist because all the different columns in that sheet are checklists for the things we're going to do for marketing. So I'll give you a quick example here. Here's the sheet. So you can see it puts in the title, URL, date automatically, and then we fill out some more information. And then as we go over, there's a bit of a checklist of all the stuff we need to set up for that post. And that's done automatically. Similarly, I have a workflow here that 
adds a task in our project management system to run the promotional tasks on any post that goes live on any of our sites, right? So this is RSS by Zapier again, but you can actually tell this one to check multiple feeds. So anytime a blog post is added to my Jimmy Rose site or to Content Snare, we're just putting a task into our project management system to run some social promotions on it, to create an ad and to go through our checklist. So another really simple one that saves us a bit of time. Now this next one is one of my favorites uh, that a lot of people don't know is possible with Zapier. And the key to this one is this step here. This is called lead score by Zapier. And what it does is looks up a person based on their email address. That's all it cares about is email address. And then it will return some information like what country they're in, how many staff they have, and a few little data points like that. And based on that, we can say if there's greater than 15 staff, then they are potentially a really good client for us. So I create a task in our task management system for me to manually follow up with that person and find out uh, what they want to use content snare for and just check in. And it allows me to do a really personalized uh, email to them and um, potentially convert them as a client. So. Essentially, all this is doing is every time someone signs up for a trial account with our product, Content Snare, so that's what happens when a new subscription is created, it just allows 30 minutes, looks the person up using a lead score by Zapier, and if they have more than 15 staff, it creates the tasks for me to manually follow up with that person. Pretty simple. That's it for marketing. Let's move on to processing payments. This first payment zap triggers based on a webhook. Now this is a special kind of message that one app can send to another app. So in this case, Thrivecart is the cart system we're using. It's sending a message to Zapier to uh, say to trigger this workflow. Now, if you'd like to learn more about webhooks, I will also link up to my webhooks video in the video description below. They are a semi-advanced topic, but I try to explain them uh, fairly simply in my video. So check that one out. But I'll just quickly show you what Thrivecart is. So here is the sales page for my Zapier mastery course. If someone wants to buy it, they click here and this is a Thrivecart checkout page, right? So uh, it does coupons and all that sort of stuff. If someone goes through, fills this all out and pays, then uh, it will send a webhook to here and trigger this workflow. Some of the webhooks that this workflow receives might be for subscription renewals or for cancellations. We don't care about those for this. We're only processing uh, purchases. So we'll only continue if it's a successful order. Then we have what's called formatter by Zapier here, and it is just going to look up and see based on the product name that comes in from Thrivecart, this is the tag that we're gonna tag them with in uh, our CRM. So in this case, that's active campaign. So I'm just mapping here uh, each product name to a tag in, uh, in active campaign. And if it doesn't find it, we say not found. And you'll see why that is in a second. So I'm gonna continue. Then the next thing it does is send me a message in Slack just to say someone has signed up to a certain product. And then finally, this is what's called paths. Now this is kind of a workflow within a workflow. It's saying if certain conditions are true, we run this workflow. And if you click edit, see how it kind of opens up a zap inside a zap. So um, yeah, so it's saying if, the, if certain conditions are true, we'll run this one. Otherwise we're gonna run this one. And in this case, it's saying if that product was found or not found, right? So again, that choose tag, remember that it says not found if it couldn't find the product. So if it's not found, it sends me a message in Slack to say someone just bought a product that's not in your lookup table. And if it is, uh, then it tags them in active campaign. So that's all that's doing. So if we have a quick look at the rules here, so it says run this workflow, the notify broken purchase. So if the purchase exactly matches not found, that's our fallback value from the previous uh, action. Then uh, it'll send a message in Slack to say, hey, um, something's broken in the zap. So that one is a little complicated, but it just shows you some of the cool stuff you can do around processing payments. Now, moving on to the next one, this is a cool little zap that we created uh, simply to register when someone signs up for our software product, Content Snare. So again, this is triggering based on a webhook that comes from our billing system called Chargebee. 
when their credit card is added, we just send a message to a channel that we have in Slack uh, to say, hey, someone signed up for a plan. This is just a fun little zap so that we get a little ping every time someone signs up because it's kind of fun for the team to see uh, how many people are signing up for our product. The final bit we have here is just some tracking set up so that we can see which people are actually upgrading to paid plans. It's not so critical for this. The main thing was just uh, that we get notifications every time there's a payment in Slack, which is kind of cool. Now let's move on to contact synchronization. Now these are some workflows that probably apply to many different businesses. If you are using multiple systems and your, your clients and contacts exist in more than one place, sometimes it's good to keep them in sync. For example, we have a couple here so that when someone unsubscribes from our emails in active campaign, that's one CRM we're using. We also send emails occasionally from a different tool called intercom. So we just want to make sure that when someone unsubscribes from active campaign, we also unsubscribe them in intercom and in reverse. So when someone unsubscribes in intercom, we also uh, unsubscribe them in active campaign. We have to use a, an update contact action here that basically just says remove them from uh, a certain list. And this third one here, you see it says replaced Integromat. That's because I've actually moved this Zap into Integromat. That's why it's turned off. That is a Zapier competitor, um, just because it gave us some more control over a couple of things. But in short, it's saying uh, when a subscription is updated in our billing system. So this is our a single source of truth. If someone updates their email here, we wanna make sure it gets updated everywhere. So when a subscription is changed, so maybe they add a credit card, maybe they change what plan they're on, uh, it will then add them to active campaign. This little block here is a formatter by Zapier, essentially just saying whether it's true or false that they have a valid credit card on their account. So that can map to a custom field in active campaign. So essentially, when someone updates their subscription, we're updating their details in Active Campaign, and we're also updating them in Intercom. So these are just a, a few other things to convert uh, text into a readable plan name. So they might be an ID like, you know, plan dash one, two, three or something as the ID. This block is just converting that into a readable name like team plan so that we can put that into Intercom. And of course, before uh, we can actually update that company in Intercom, we need to find them. So these steps are kind of uh, just extra things that we need to do. The real meat of this is just saying when a subscription's updated, update their details in active campaign, also update them in intercom. So let's move on to website monitoring. So this zap tells us when there is a critical issue or some downtime on our website. So we use this tool called Status Cake, which uh, can give us notifications when something goes wrong on our website. And like before, they are able to send webhooks. So that's why it's really important to know how to use webhooks because it really opens up uh, your abilities with Zapier. So again, uh, that link uh, to my webhooks video will be in the description below. But essentially that is, Status Cake is sending a webhook over to Zapier here on our critical website alerts uh, notification workflow. And it's just posting a message straight into Slack. So we see that immediately. You could also use this to send SMSs because there's an SMS tool built into Zapier. You could put it in your task management system or whatever. In our case, I just want that message in Slack because I've set this channel, uh, the alerts channel, to uh, notify me immediately, right? So we've got the web team alerts channel uh, channel here, and it's just saying the website status is up or down, uh, the code and the URL, so we can see what is going on. When we used to work with client websites, this was really helpful because we would know immediately when one of our client's websites had an issue as well. In this second one here, we use a tool called WordFence to do some security monitoring for our site and it doesn't really have any integrations. What it does is sends an email uh, every time it finds something majorly wrong with our website. So we've said when, when there's a critical alert, send an email. Now Zapier has a tool called Email Parser. So this creates a special email address and every time it receives an email, it will run this workflow. If you'd like more information about how email parser works, I have a video on that too and I'll link it up in the description below. But essentially, 
what this allows you to do is trigger the workflow when an email comes in because you know WordFence doesn't have any integrations it just sends emails so this allows us then to essentially create a integration for some for a tool that doesn't even have integrations so that's kind of cool trigger based on the email and then uh, we post a message in slack to say what the problem was because this tool will actually allow you to pull out certain details uh, from the email so we pull out what the name of the issue was and what website it happened in and then we post a message into slack to say this is the site that had a problem and this is what the problem is so we can action that immediately so now let's move on to the final category of productivity and miscellaneous now these ones basically just don't fit into any of the other categories, but they help me uh, save some time and make sure I catch important events in our business like this one here. So in Jira, which is a project management system for our software development, someone might mention me and I very rarely log into Jira because that's where the developers generally hang out and there's not a lot for me to do. But if someone asks a question, uh, Jira goes and sends me an email and so when I have an email matching a certain search, so in this case, that's going to be um, Jira, someone mentioned me on and it's got my email address there. So that triggers the workflow. Uh, it sends me a message in uh, Slack, a direct message just to say, hey, someone's tagged you and it gives me a link to go directly to that and reply. So it means I don't have to check Jira regularly uh, because I generally don't like going in there. So for this next one, this is essentially just moving files around. So our product content snare, which is a, a product that people use for collecting information and files from clients. So uh, they lay out a questionnaire and they say, here's all the things I need. And sometimes if you get your clients to upload files, you might not want to keep them just in content snare. You might want to put them in Google Drive or Dropbox. Uh, so that's what this workflow is doing here. It's saying every time a client completes a field in content snare will only continue if it's a file so we ignore any text-based things and we just upload the file to the correct folder in google drive really really simple this one here i really like it's just a cool little workflow that uh, gives us some motivation and some social media content so an nps score is a score that comes from users of our product. Again, Content Snare, it pops up, up a little survey inside the app that says, how likely are you to recommend using Content Snare? And so they choose a number between uh, zero and 10, and then they can put in a comment and say why they like it or why they don't like it. So when that happens, we send a message in Slack to the team, to a feedback channel. So everyone can see this is the feedback we're currently getting. So if we get positive feedback, um, everyone, you know, it's kind of nice to see. And if you get negative feedback, everyone can see it. So it's like, oh, maybe that's something we should fix. Um, so that's really handy. And these next two blocks here, again, this is a digest, which we covered earlier. So it's just creating a list of things. So um, it's creating a list of every person that uh, submitted feedback and in the end of the week, it releases the digest. So this comes in on uh, Tuesdays, I believe. So it says we, a little emoji here. Uh, and then it's saying the, the person's name, the score out of 10 and the message that they wrote. And it's creating one of these in the list for every time someone creates um, some feedback and then puts it in my task management system. So then I can copy out this. I just basically have to, at the end of the week, I copy all the text and put it into Twitter. So this, this is manual. I could do this automatically, but I just want a chance to make sure it's all clear. So you can see this is the digest here where someone put, um, the feedback of 10. So it filled out that bit of information and the comment that they wrote. Uh, and then, so someone else called Chase and someone else called Brayden, but they didn't leave a comment. So this is just a cool little workflow I use to uh, create uh, some feedback content for our Twitter. And it's all done automatically, which is kind of cool. And the final zap I'll go through in this video is my podcast preparation zap. Now, this is obviously specific uh, to people having a podcast, but you could actually do something similar to this for preparing for meetings. When someone books in for a meeting with you, it could be a similar workflow. So what this does is when someone books in for a podcast interview on my podcast agency highway, uh, we only care if it's a podcast booking Thing. If they've just booked a normal meeting, we don't want to run this workflow. Um, but in that booking form, it asks them a few questions. And this step here 
essentially allows you to create a templated Google document. So I have a run sheet for every guest. Now it looks like this. So I just, these are all the things that I need to do at the start, but you can see here, there are a few things. Uh, these are just placeholders for data that comes in from the workflow. So I ask guests, you know, what's the one thing that you want people to walk away with? What are some questions I can ask you? This kind of thing. And all of these get replaced by this workflow. You'll see it here. So we're replacing uh, the questions, the one thing and the guest questions, which match up to these here, uh, with the information that came from that calendar booking. So if you had a potential client that you were meeting with, you might ask them some things, you know, like what what's the main thing you wanna get out of working with us? Who are your audience, whatever. And you could automatically replace parts of a document with their answers and then you've got that document ready to go uh, before the meeting. So that's what the rest of this does is says, get that document and drop it into my task management system to check over before the podcast. And then it delays until the booking. So this workflow will actually pause until the podcast happens. And then two hours afterwards, it creates another task for me to go and check in uh, with the guest and just say, thanks for uh, being on the show. And here's what I need you to do next. So again, this is something you could do uh, if you had a client booking, you could have this in to make sure you follow up with them after the meeting. And uh, if they have any homework, make sure they're doing it. Okay, that is it. I hope at least one of these workflows has jogged some ideas for you to go away and automate something in your business. The world of workflow automation is so freaking awesome because it allows you to save some time in your business. Like if you're like most business owners, you're probably super busy all the time and automating some things allows you to, you know, get some time back to spend on whether more important things or, you know, something fun that's not business related. So I hope uh, you go away and automate something after this video. Remember, if there are any automations that you want more detail on, please let me know in the comments below or just let me know if you've got an idea out of this. Just drop it in the comments. I'd love to hear what you've come up with. Um, I'm Jimmy from jimmyrose.me and if you'd like to learn more ways to automate your business and get more productive, hit that subscribe button below and I'll see you in the next video.